Hey everyone, this is Paul with Go Engineer, and in this video, we're taking an in depth look at Edit Toolpath, which is available in both SolidWorks CAM and CAMWorks. For those of you who have been CNC programming a while, at one point in time or another, you probably thought to yourself, I need to edit my toolpath. Now, having said that thought out loud, how many of you think about the following? Making various changes on each tab inside the Operation Parameters dialog. Post-processing your NC code, then making changes inside the SOLIDWORKS CAM or CAMWORKS NC editor. Going old school and making edit changes using a text editing program. Or loading your NC code in the machine controller then hand editing it to your liking. Yet with all of these great options, you are still not satisfied with your toolpath. Perhaps you're looking for a more direct approach with an easy to use dialog where you can modify toolpath motion and speed at precise locations and have it update instantly in your SOLIDWORKS display area. If this piques your curiosity, then keep watching as I'll take a detailed look at Edit Toolpath. Since I want to directly edit my toolpath for this Turn Finish 1 operation, I'll just click on the plus sign and access the OD Feature 1 Rough Finish, right mouse button click on it, then left mouse button click or select Edit Toolpath. For this operation, the Edit Toolpath dialog allows you to perform various functions such as move the positional CL or cutter location node, delete a CL node, insert or modify a feed rate change statement and value either before or after the selected CL node, insert a rapid or feed move either before or after the selected CL node. The control bar located near the top of the dialog lets you navigate through the CL records of this tree. The number field on the left specifies the number of records to reverse or move forward, while the number field on the right specifies how many CL records to display. Toolpath record points can be displayed by the on-off button and it's the same as well for the display of tool vectors in the display area. Showing the cutting tool image as well as its corresponding holder can be toggled on and off as well. I want to modify this toolpath segment so it stops five thousandths from the next larger diameter face. Using the navigation button, I'll step through each CL node until I reach cut two. You can also see what's happening in the display area. With cut two now highlighted, I'll copy my existing X value of 0.3121 into the two field. Although the same workflow can be done to use my existing Z value, I want to stop five thousandths of an inch from the next larger diameter face. Since my target finish position is negative 0.8435, as shown in the picture detail, I'll key in the value of negative 0.8385. This is an absolute positional change and to validate these edits, I'll select the move button, which updates the display area. Next, I want to move the tool away at an angle after cut two by 50 thousandths in both X and Z directions as a rapid movement. Using the new record dialog, We'll check the rapid and after radial buttons. We can use the same workflow as before when transferring existing numeric values. Key in basic mathematical functions or simply enter in the desired numeric value. I'll modify the X value to 0.3621 and the Z value to negative 0.7885. Select insert then close to validate this record in the Edit Toolpath dialog and also update the display area. Now, 
Let's add a rapid movement to position the tool in positive Z by right mouse button clicking on Rapid 4, Insert, then selecting Rapid Cut. Again, using this new record dialog, we'll check the rapid and after radial buttons. Since there are no changes to my X value, I'll transfer and keep this existing number of 0.3621. For my Z value, I want to adjust it 50 thousandths from its current value, or negative 0.6127. Select Insert, then Close to validate this record in the Edit Toolpath dialog and also update the display area. Now that my positive Z is taken care of, let's add a cut to position the tool in negative X by right mouse button clicking on Rapid 5, Insert, then selecting Rapid slash Cut. For this new record dialog, we'll check the Cut and After radial buttons. For my X value, I want to adjust it 50 thousandths from this current value, or 0.3121. Since there are no changes to my Z value, I'll transfer and keep this existing number of negative 0.6127. Select Insert, then Close to validate this record in the Edit Toolpath dialog and also update the display area. A feed rate adjustment is needed before Cut 3, so I'll insert a new feed rate change. Inside of this dialog, I'll choose the Before radial button and key in the new feed rate value of 0 0.0120 inches per revolution. Select OK to validate this record in the Edit Toolpath dialog and also update the display area. Another feed rate adjustment is needed before Cut 4, so I'll insert a new feed rate change here. Inside of this dialog, I'll choose the Before radial button and key in the new feed rate value of 0 0.0160 inches per revolution. Select OK to validate this record in the Edit Toolpath dialog and also update the display area. I need to adjust the current X and Z location values of CL node Cut 6, so the tool positions itself away from the part. Once highlighted, I'll transfer these existing X and Z from values, then modify the X field to a value of 0.6755 and the Z value to a value of negative 0.9635. This is another absolute positional change and to validate these edits I'll select the move button which updates the display area. After making edit changes to cut 6, cut 7 is no longer needed so it's just a matter of highlighting it and selecting Delete. This also applies to Rapid 2. Again, highlight this CL node, then select Delete. At this point, I'm done making changes to this operation. Before closing out of Edit Toolpath, I'll review everything by going back to the navigation buttons and single step through each cutter location node. To complete the edits, I'll click on Close. When you manually edit toolpaths using the Edit Toolpath dialog and then close the dialog, SolidWorks Cam or CamWorks will provide an option to lock the toolpath so that when a rebuild is performed or toolpaths are regenerated, the manual edits will be retained. For this warning message, I have two options. Yes, Lock this toolpath to retain these edits or no. Do not lock this toolpath. Then, when toolpaths are regenerated, I will lose the manual edits. Now, since I want to keep these manual edits, I'm going to click on Yes. Once done, the operation will visually update to the color purple, and the feature strategy will indicate TP edited within the text brackets. For those of you who want to unlock a locked operation, right mouse button click on the operation 
and then select unlock. At this point, I'm totally satisfied with this turn finish operation that's based upon this specific outside diameter feature. So I'm now going to verify all of my operations using simulate toolpath. Looking at my part normal to ZX, I'll make some display adjustments so that I'm able to view my work holding fixture as well. As expected, I'm able to see how everything interacts with each other. This includes the finished part, stock, chuck fixture, updated toolpath movements, cutting tools, and if desired, the cutting tool holders. I also have the ability to activate various settings of the tool collision to verify any potential crashes within this turn setup. As mentioned earlier, Edit Toolpath is a core function in SOLIDWORKS CAM and CAMWORKS. Although I've discussed it in detail for this turning application, Edit Toolpath is available for horizontal and vertical milling, mill turn, as well as 2.5 axis programming and machining, 3 axis or multi surface programming and machining, and assembly programming and machining. Go Engineer has decades of experience helping companies succeed using cutting edge, industry leading manufacturing tools. We are the experts with this technology and are passionate to help you leverage the power of SOLIDWORKS CAM and CAMWORKS for your company. If you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and click on the subscribe button below. This is Paul with Go Engineer. Thanks for watching.